as long as we make the show We can be the best or we can be the worst We can be the best thing you ever heard With the motor singing and the grandstands ringing It's hard to put it all in words But this is how we ride Tossing her in sideways, living the life, living the ride, high side, winning to die. Cross her up on the cushion, crossing the line. Caught some drama and some bullshit they didn't like. And if they don't like the move, then we're ready to fly. But this is how we ride, this is how we do. here today we are here we got some dual lighting i need i thought we got some dual lighting i thought we needed some uh we needed a, a little bit more of the chaz involved because before we just had the one light um and that that's how it would look and that's fine you know but but the chaz deserves everything especially the umbilical uh side nerve ending side that works a lot of people think that i've always dipped and that's not the case. This whole teeth deal, sideways lip deal's always been a thing. Uh, it's a birth defect um, from the umbilical cord being wrapped around my neck at birth, um, and having to do emergency C-section. So basically, you know, they say the stress level you come into life with is the stress level you will uh, have throughout your life, and you know, there's some heebie-jeebies about that. You'll see some of these. Yoga people be like, you should have birth in a tub so that everything is calm and unnerving. And so they also blame the, the, the issues with society in America, the erratic behaviors based on us being born in a hospital room and all these crazy things going on. And, and these weebie-jeebie people kind of blame that for the uh, chronic mental illness. But with me, I'm next level. I came in world choking me, trying to kill me. The world didn't want me in the damn earth. I was born on June 21st, 1987, same damn day of the last victory by Tim Richmond. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Forwards and backwards. Eight, seven, 20, 21, or 2016. 62187. Oh my God. I got a, the, the day I drove a race car also. First time in my life drove a race car. And the same day that Brian Clawson died. I'm scared already. I need to back off. We have had an actual a good day. We had a, a sports break video that we did yesterday. Got gifted another one. Um, and actually pulled. I, I don't want to brag, but I am going to brag. We pulled this card, which is a, I don't know if you can see it, Ark Manning Redemption card. And when you go onto eBay to look at this card, I, I apparently you send it in, you get one of these, uh, this, this card, let me just say this, this card alone, they're selling for it on eBay in the 300, 350 range, $400 range, Ark Manning, who is a, uh, Saturday star signatures redemption. And you see this thing, look at it. Let's just zoom in on it. 
And it's just it's just nice. You know, it's just nice. And then of course, if you if you if you pull the right situation here, uh, you know, you could you could come out on top just a little bit. On top, just 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 a little, little bit. But anyways, we're not gonna be talking about that all the way. Uh just a little bit of the uh situation that came up today. Um and it'll be very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, regardless, we do have things to talk about. We'll get off the, the, the situation. We'll see if the chat room is fired up yet. Uh, it does not look just yet. Just yet. We just started the stream, though. Just started the stream. So for those who want to get in here and get things started, sharing the show around, that'll help out just a little bit as well. But we, we, we will... Well, actually, we were going to start on this this Port Royal situation, but I think that we're going to switch over to something else. And that is this Broke Joe scenario. You know, a bunch of people, a bunch, were very reactive to Broke Joe and the things that he said. In fact, yesterday I received multiple phone calls from multiple people he is talking about very upset at Joe. He don't know what he's talking about, this, that, and the other. Oh, one call went bad for Justin. Who who cares? What about all these calls that went good for Justin? You know, Justin's just... Uh, a saint in Joe's eyes where we see the, the Justin that's real out on the racetrack, the one that will get in a Paul Silva car and bang a car out of the way to win in his first race at Merced. And, and we got a lot of people saying some very negative things, but the one thing I offered them and and the reason I have Joe on is because Joe will actually say something that bothers him. He will he is not afraid to speak publicly about what he doesn't like or what somebody may have done or a call that was made or this that or the other how they're doing things. He'll say it. Whereas these people who have such a problem with Joe in a similar fashion that he has a problem with them, they don't want to say anything. And and that may be a part of being in the privileged position. You know, Joe is the hardworking guy uh, that does it all on his own. And, and, and these other people may be hardworking in their own right, but they don't have to address it. It's not going to change for them. But I see this once again, as I said to some of these people, that Joe is a is a is a result of his environment over there. You know, and this is a, a great example. These people don't want to get on here or publicly respond to Joe. And even some of those uh, degradingly saying that Joe is like a crybaby, crying out, has some mental issues with daddy and mommy, didn't give him enough attention, stuff like that. That's why he's over here on the chads running his mouth. Well, I mean... We all are grown babies in a way, one way or another. Some of the things that and how we act are based on, you know, um, taught or a situation where you were forced to deal with a situation in childhood, stuff like that. I just talked about the umbilical cord. There's probably some, you know, things that I can't break that maybe that situation instilled in me, natural reactions to things. Um and I think in the environment where everybody who has a problem stays silent, nothing ever gets fixed. Everybody just stays in line. And at least when people start to speak out on a, a subject that obviously a lot of people agree with, Joe, there's a tons of people who agree with them. But the ones that disagree, as long as their reaction is to stay silent, then no issues are ever fixed. Because there's probably issues on the other side of the mountain uh, from Joe. You're the people he's talking about with such angst and animosity that we can all feel and hear in his voice. There's probably some things on their side of the aisle that they don't like, that they have an issue with. But everybody's just going to be quiet. 
And I think that that's one of the biggest issues in society today is everybody is just quiet. There are issues. They keep them alone. They go out into the woods. They go into their house. And then they have all this pent up, built up frustration and they release it onto their family or their friends who are very near and dear and close. But sometimes that can lead to over angered reactions to the people that are closer to them instead of actually addressing the people that are responsible for the way you feel. At least Joe takes the step forward on a public domain to tell people that he has a problem with that he has a problem with them and what they're doing and given very, you know, he gives very uh, detailed explanations as to what that actually is. So I think that, I mean, is there a reason to say sorry for having Joe on the show? Once again, I think that he's a a product of the situation on there. I, I mean, it, it, I, as far as long, and as long as he's willing to talk about the situation, I'm going to keep having him on. Uh, once again, I think the issue is those who disagree or want to combat Joe on some of the things that he's accusing or saying are f- are afraid or unwilling or don't want to get involved. They don't want to get in the middle of it. Well, I mean, that, in my opinion, is the problem with society. Everybody wants to shrug things under the rug in the mental compartments of their mind, and then that's when they can have explosions. That's when they blow up. If they don't deal with issues or things that agitate them, the agitation builds to anger. Um, so that would be what I would say. I, I think that I talked to Joe because he's one of the only people willing to actually have a public discourse about their issues. Now, some would say, keep it private, keep it low. And Joe does have a point where with some of these richer, more, um, financially stable people, they like to keep it on the low, uh, because they have the, they can strong arm you in a, in a private situation. They can do things that no one else will hear about. Whereas Joe kind of understands that and is putting it out onto the public domain so that things can be handled publicly because they can't strong arm you like they do in a private situation. So I definitely understand that aspect of where Joe's like, well, I can't say this privately. They'll just, they'll strong arm you, black, this, that, the other. And if, if I go publicly on the chaz and say it, then they can come and publicly say it back and we can all have it out on the table. Like I said, uh, to the person, I think the problem with society is with people being like this and not not coming out with how they feel that too many things get sw- swept under the table, you know, and nothing's ever ever put out and actually dealt with. If, if Joe's viewed as a crybaby to the to the sprint car racing uh, situation of California, where are the the people who have been running it? Who are the par- Who are the parents of the situation? Who are the ones guiding this situation that he is crying out about? So that's, whoever that is, I, I would say that's who to blame. Now, now Joe's sitting here saying there's a few people to blame. The parents, he's pointing to the parents of the situation. And the parents just want to ignore the issue. And that's fine. But people get put in the bubbles, and, and, and that's what happens. But anyways... Open invitation for anyone to come on here. Uh, somebody joked about, well, Kyle could come on there, and, and he wouldn't come on your show. And I, fi- I find it, or I, w- I would think he wouldn't come on the show, and I find it hilarious how some people uh, say, Kyle won't talk with you or talk about you, where, once again, if anybody wants to go document this Kyle Chaz thing, I, I-, I was getting, like, I-, I started my Facebook page 2017 of October, I had like 15 million views in a month and a half doing the stuff I was doing. And he came on there talking shit to me. Kyle Larson's name didn't come out of my mouth. I was actually defending him. But the buddy system overrode that defense of of, of true situations. So Kyle Larson saw me having success and tried to come in and fuck it up. And I just haven't backed down, and I haven't backed down continually. It actually spurred the creation of the of the worst fan base name that I could ever come up with, known as the Larsonites, because all of his little warriors came to battle for him when he came and pointed at me as I'm some fucking bad guy because I think there's race car drivers out there better than NASCAR drivers who are monetarily placed in those positions 
And I think that skill cannot be bought. It is something that is God-given. But that that's worth coming after me over. So regardless, I just laugh and snicker at the people. Oh, he won't come on your show. Well, he came at me first. So the introduction was from him. Now, unfortunately for uh, High Limit, their champion is is Kyle Larson. Looking at the High Limit uh, Facebook page right here. Of course, they raced last night. Cap Henry almost uh, shocked the world and won. Um, but something on the Twitter that I was actually relayed to about things here. Of course, they're all showing everything. But, but High Limit put this and they tagged me. A few people tagged me in this and said, Chaz, can you believe what you're seeing? And I'm like, what's so funny about this? He won the championship. Congratulations. You you have your own ring and you have your own trophy. And he said, no, Chaz, zoom in on the trophy. And out of all the things in the world that have been perfect with trophies and things in the High Limit series, I've heard of no I in team but I've never heard of no I in racing. Now, I don't know if they did this because of Israel. I don't know what's going on. They had that beautiful ring uh, that was going to the champion. Obviously, Kyle Larson is that guy now. But for there to be a spelling error, to, th- to, to this degree, on the opening High Limit series for Kyle Larson, like whoever got that invoice or, or, or product order, And it said, for Kyle Larson, for inaugural High Limit Sprint Car Series champion, uh, for the potential series to lead sprint car racing into the future, we needed to say High Limit Racing Series champion, and then you do whatever you want, customize it, make it cool. Out of everything that is cool on this trophy... For it to have that degree of a fuck-up makes me question what's going on here. You know, was it a buddy that they chose to do these trophies? Like, maybe he was a good fabricator or something, and they're like, well, he's your buddy, let's sign him up, he's okay, he'll do. You know, a lot of people say that Dylan Welch needs to go as an announcer. I mean, is he there because he's a great sprint car announcer? Is he there because of his connections with people and the ties, the family lineage? I mean, Bakoven came in and saved the literal day for the High Limit Sprint Car Series and their announcing core. I mean, it should be like me, Wade Andre, and, and Tony Bakoven. That would be funny, but... um. I just can't believe that this has happened. I just can't believe. I mean, and 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 the ring. I don't know where where is it at. The high limit ring. This thing is is so badass for the champion. It's it's got to be somewhere in here. They posted it like a week ago. I mean, Kyle obviously gets to wear his own ring. I, I can't find it right now. Hold on. Let's see. It was a video. Um. Yeah, right there, the high limit ring. I mean, this, this, I mean, is there typos on this damn thing too? Do we need to pause it and read everything that's, that's up here? Like what's going on? It says 23. Looks like, does this say chanty, chantian or, 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 or champ on what's going on here? All right, it looks like it's got an eye in it. It looks like it's got an eye. So the ring the ring checks out. So why in the world does the trophy or the uh yeah, the trophy not check out? Can somebody explain to me this? This is this is and this is I don't know if it's a buddy, but this is this is also what could happen if somebody is put to the job because they're a buddy and not because they're the best? Two, huge tro. I don't know how much those trophies cost. They don't look cheap. They shouldn't be cheap. 
I, somebody's got to tell me that this is intentional. Like, is is are they going to spin this? As Kyle was like, well, since I was going to win the championship, I didn't want to put an eye in racing because there is no eye in this thing. It's for everyone in the sport. Like, I don't, I don't know how they're going to spin this. That would be the suggested way, I would think. But I just can't believe it. I just, I just, I just can't believe that this is happening. Let's see here. Anything in the chat? I like the BAPS announcer. Um, uh, he's better than the guy at Port. A lot of people hate that Eric Coon guy. Then again, I've seen the money people get where what they want, and us low budget guys don't get heard unless we go public on media such as the Chaz Show. Correct, correct. A world racing group wouldn't even make that mistake. That is a this is a very, very big mistake, guys. I I, I I'm sorry. I mean, maybe y'all think I maybe uh, I'm I'm a little harsh right now, but this is the th Kyle. Like like I said, who gets the order form? For this job. And makes that the degree of a mistake. I just. I I, I can't. I, I really can't believe my eyes. And did no one notice? Like the, the look on Kyle's face here. And Paul's face here. They Do they even know this is happening? I don't understand. Is it eye racing that I need to start doing? What's the symbolism here? I don't understand it. I, I just don't get this part. That makes no sense to me at all. But regardless, Kyle's the champion. Um, tranquility does not matter. I, I mean, it was a little close there for a minute, I guess, on the uh, on the championship battle there. I mean, I... I I was we had already diagnosed the whole uh situation at Bridgeport where this was kind of almost planned to have some championship drama. It seemed like it. We never seen Kyle lift it with momentum in our entire viewing pleasure career. And then all of a sudden he does at Bridgeport while racing Rico for the lead. But he tried really hard. I thought he had, might have had a shot at winning last night. He was uh, up top in three and four like a lot of people weren't. Uh, it bit Brady Bacon at one point. Uh, the bottom entering three and four. Three and four was really the treacherous uh, side of the track. One and two, it seemed like everybody navigated pretty well. There was a little, um, you know, they were going in there in the one and two, kind of trying to, to pinwheel the car around on the bottom, and that there was causing some close close issues when guys were trying to diamond off the top of, of one and shoot straight across and go to the, go down the back straight away. Three and four though, uh, was a little, it looked, uh, looked to be at least a little more slicker on the bottom. Uh, guys were able to get around, run on the top cap Henry, obviously, uh, the little slick on the bottom caused him to have an issue. There was a big issue in the work area, I guess. Um, some four wheelers pushed cap Henry's car into Justin Sanders car. Uh, that's what I was hearing. I, I saw kind of something like that. I was kind of looking away doing something. You know, I'm always working while the race was going. And when that yellow came out, I kind of paid attention to, to the other stuff. So I didn't see it on point. I did look up and see the guys yelling at Cap Henry's crew. Uh, very unfortunate for everyone involved. Bunch of little guys taken out in that whole Cap Henry, Justin Sanders, uh, Corey Elias, and not really a little guy, but two little guys that were performing well in Cap Henry and Sanders involved in that. That was definitely unfortunate. Uh, but Rico winning. Tyler Courtney actually got Larson for second at the line. Larson's in, ending up third uh, with a seven-point lead and championship advantage. I just can't believe that. Can anybody super chat me and tell me why? I, I mean, I will put the super chat on the screen. Somebody super chat me and tell me why. Let's see, we got maybe some more answers in the comment section. Are we going to start talking about announcers? Is that is that what is going on? Um, even though Wayne Harper sounds depressing, I've always just connected his voice with Lincoln, and I don't mind it where some people hate it. I would agree. Wayne Harper, I don't really like his announcing style. I think it's very boring. I think it's very slow. Um, but... It does. It there are certain voices that are just connected to places, 
I mean, football, basketball, they all have their voices, whether they're proficient in how they do it. They do it how they do it, and it, and it just resonates with a situation. And Wayne Harper and Lincoln do go together, unfortunately, I would say. <laughs> just because of the delivery and, and the status quo of it. Um, people were chirping the final on social media. There's an I in every other word on that trophy. Yes, there is. Uh, Marty Powell with the comment of the year. The guy was a fabricator, not a spelling champion. Uh, the trophy looks like a cardboard cutout. Yes, that's funny. Um, the trophy designer and anyone else in the making of that thing should be fired and ashamed of themselves. Uh, somebody's asking, what's embarrassing? We were talking about the High Limit Championship trophy. Uh, missing a a very key piece in some... I, 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 these trophies couldn't have been free. There's no way. Uh, if they were... Okay. And, and we're looking at High Limit Racing with an NG, no I involved. You can see it on the trophy that Paul Silva and uh, Kyle Larson, the greatest race car driver of all time, is holding right now. And the, the, they're they're both missing an eye. Champion has an eye. Series has an eye. Limit has an eye. Has two of them. High has one. Everybody has an eye except racing. And maybe that is the symbolism. There is, there's, there's no eye in team. And in racing, there is no team. It is all about the eye. It is all about the ego. It is all about the greed, the consumption, the I did this mentality. Whether that's a car owner, whether that's a sponsor, I sponsored that car, I I paid for that car. Whether it's a promoter, I put on that race, I put on that show, I won this, I did that, I changed the tires, I set the car up, I drove the truck down. It's all an I sport. So maybe that is the symbolism in this trophy is there is an I in high limit series and champion. But there is no I in racing. Hmm. Maybe this is my, um, maybe I need to just like back out completely and not be in racing. Maybe that's the symbolism. Chaz, just get out. There's no I here. There's, there's, there's plenty of room for you in the high limits of the world. There's plenty of room for you to be a, a champion in the world, but in racing, it's just a rich man's game. What? That's something that somebody, you know, rebuttaled to, to Joe's comments. One of the people who are against what Joe had to say. Is this is a rich man's game, Chaz. He knows it. He knows it. This is a rich man's game. We don't need him on there crying about it. He knows. He should have known. I think that's what the symbolism here is saying. There is no I in racing. Mm -mm -mm. Anyways, we'll check the chat one more time. Put that up on the screen. Um, We got us a super chat. Jordan already in the chats here. I work as a communications PR consultant. Organizations hire people like me to avoid mistakes like that. I mean, I could have helped them out. I know how to spell racing, Jordan. I know how to spell racing. There's not an I in... I got the victory fuel. There's not an I in fuel. There's not an I in yours, but there is an I in victory. See, there's room for me in life and victory. But there may not be room for me in racing. There is no I in racing. Unbelievable. Thanks to Jordan with the super chat. And maybe they need to hire some people like you. Maybe it is a reference to NG, Northrop Grumman. Maybe that's what Spike Fast Racing is saying. Since that's what Kyle got in trouble for saying. Oh my God. And there is no I in racing, I racing, NG, oh my God. Spike, Brandon says, Chaz going deep on the meaning. Spike just went to the next level of what that might have meant. Oh my God. Spike, it sounds like you're trying to say that this was like a ha-ha to the world from Kyle for saying the the ng word and leaving i out of i racing i racing is where he said the ng word put the i in ng and you've got it oh my god wow spike connecting the dots bro i was i was thinking ng for northrop grumman you know the one of the biggest defense contractors of the country and we are 
technically uh, Israel, war in Israel is a sign of the end times, and even the rich men north of Richmond singing was one of the saints. So there is a lot of big biblical prop, prophecy. You know, the saints come out and scream to the world how it's so horrible and this is all bad and everything's ruined and uh, and then Israel has war and then the world comes to an end. That's basically what happened, right? I mean, the rich man north of Richmond came out. How bad it is for the poor people, God's people, and now there's war in Israel. So I thought NG was for Northrop Grumman. If people don't know who Northrop Grumman is, you 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 might want to learn who that is. That's the guy you pay. You pay, probably pay more tax money to Northrop Grumman than any. Than you know. Well, there's a few others out there, but you probably paid a lot. You probably paid billions, trillions of your life. Love you and broke Joe. Keep up the good work, Larry O, going to the front. And what happened? No, Jay, we are not calling up Joe. We are not calling up Joe. He is not suspended from the Chaz or anything like that. But today, I had to respond because yesterday I was bombarded with phone calls, text messages, Facebook messages saying Joe needs therapy. People he was talking about are very upset at Joe. He believes, or these people believe that Joe is a liar. Joe has mental issues. His parents did not take care of him when he was young or something's wrong with him. He's crying out. He's just a big crybaby. And the parents, these people, the parents of the sprint car racing world on the West Coast are not willing to come on here and address and talk to their child known as as Broke Joe. They're not going to talk to their child. They're just going to hear the baby crying out out for help. They're going to hear Broke Joe crying out of the, the fallacies that were committed at fall nationals with, with Justin Sanders getting screwed. And they got a good argument. You know, Justin's got been on the better side of, of instances that way. There's been, you know, how many times is, is, is it called a complete lap and it benefits Justin? You know, but regardless, I just had to, I felt like I had to get on here and say to the world, Joe is a product of that environment and the people who run and created that environment for Joe to be in the position that he is in is more than likely the reason Joe is even saying the things that he is saying. And when I've offered these people to come on, I have not offered Peter Murphy. I could probably talk to him. That might happen. I don't think broke Joe really has an issue with Peter Murphy. It seems like he has an issue with a bunch of other guys and he's been talking about them. They don't want to come on. They don't want to get in the middle of it, and that's fine. That's fine. They don't want to get in the middle of it. That's fine. But I do believe that that's the issue in society. Everybody don't want to put what they think out there. They scrub it under the table, and in my opinion, that's what causes mental issues. I believe that broke Joe Joe is kind of free of guilt, free of mind. So that's why he just goes on here and says whatever the hell he he thinks because he he knows that he he's not worried about it. So, I mean, it could be confused he needs therapy or maybe other people feel the same, or obviously there's people upset with what Joe had to say, but they don't want to come on here and respond. They want to ignore. They want to just let it go. Well, buddy, there's a guy in the in the racing community over there that's had a fair amount of success that has a problem with how the racing community is going. And I'm sure as much as your rich elite car owner cartel is a supporter of how things are, that there is a bunch of broke Joes on the show that are not happy about the, the current state of racing over there. I'm sure there's a bunch of guys that aren't in that elite-funded area of the racing world that feel exactly like Joe does, but they just don't say anything in fear of repercussion of your hatred. Joe is not afraid of repercussion of your hatred. Now, some people may say, well, he's broke Joe. He don't have much, so he don't... He don't have much to lose, so he has no fear of repercussions, whereas one of these bigger names could get on here, and if they say something wrong or say something offensive, there's repercussions. But Broke Joe is self-owned. He's self-made. He has his own money. He don't need anyone to like him, to sponsor him, to support him. And there's a lot of people out there that also don't have uh, the money or or the need for support from sponsors, and they're self-funded, and they agree with the other side. Of, of the situation. They think that Joe's just a big crybaby. I'm just saying. I think that other people should be attuned to coming on here and saying something against it. And then maybe there could be resolution. Tony Gomes came on here and, and posted Joe up about his claims of the King of the West series last year. So, or, or this year, I believe, actually. So, 
Joe's up to being told he's an idiot. Just tell him he's an idiot. Some guy tried to tell me he was an idiot yesterday about the fall nationals, and and Joe corrected him live on on live on here on the show. So, open invitation. I talk to Joe because Joe's willing to talk. If you're not willing to talk, that could be part of the issue. That could be part of the issue. Well, Jay says talk to a guy like Landon Brooks to get their opinion. Landon Brooks is so little, so young, they don't even know this stuff. But that goes back to what Spike says. This racing thing is somewhat of a uh, a corporate version of human trafficking because it controls the minds of their mouth. If anybody is scared to get on here because of fear of repercussion, you're owned. You're a slave. You're mentally slaved. The control of your mouth is the is the dead end to your life. If your mouth can be bought, your soul is encased in that purchase. Anyways, I want to get to this freaking Port Royal deal. Um, There is a situation, and then we'll open the lines up for a few minutes, potentially. Uh, Once again, if you didn't catch it, high limit race NG champion. Somebody let their nepotism get the best of them. No I in racing. Spike with the the, the the slam dunk potentially on the symbolism of this. I-N-G. I-Racing. N-G. I put the I in N-G. That is not cool. I do, I, I do not agree with Spike, for the record. I do not agree with Spike. Let's see what Spike came in here and said. High limit racing still seems low level compared to out, Outlaws. It looks low budget and amateur. I agree. Um... I completely re- agree with you. Thanks, Libertarian Man. We'll catch you on the rebound as well. I think that they need to work on their production level. I think that they need a, a crew so- similar to the, the late models do for their production shows with their pre-race show, halftime show, post-race show. They'll get me, Wade Andre, and Dirt Tracker in there. I don't know. Have us on the stage out in the pits or have us in the stage behind the grandstands. Do it right. That would be cool. Let's have real shows, and then you could you could trump what the outlaws got going on. They send it to some old guy in a studio with the green screen flaring off the side of his head, you know. So they're trying to do it, but they just don't have the talent to do it. Um, so I do think that they're a few steps behind, but they're not a step behind the outlaws as far as momentum, as far as a, a relevance right now, as far as um, promotion, marketing. They are out there. Their actual product is a little amateur in compared to the World of Outlaws. Um, the one thing I didn't want to touch on, apparently Port Royal, I was tagged in this as well. Uh, Port Royal postponed their uh, Short Track Super Series uh, Speed Showcase 50,000 uh, to win event. They postponed the entire event to March 14th through the 16th. And they are not refunding the camp spots. They are telling them to hold on to their camping spots. So people have put in, and there's some comments in here. I'm not going to read them all. Uh, not refunding camp spots is insane, especially when the race is postponed till March of next year. What a crook. So some people are <laughs> really mad. Right on the hills of this big outlaw Tuscarora weekend, you know, the big uh, dirt, super dirt week. They were going to bring the modifieds down. And now they postpone an entire weekend to March. And I thought the comments in the Facebook uh, posts were just as hilarious. Um, people are, are definitely not letting Port Royal get away with this too easily. Um, love a mod race there in March. Always excellent. Some people are being nice, which, I mean, this is a hard thing to handle. I mean, everything's kind of weird. Um uh, somebody said, will 23, or 23 season tickets be accepted at this event? Um, some people are really upset. I'm not sure I understand canceling Friday, Saturday, yes, but de- but Friday feels like a missed opportunity to race. Uh, somebody said Friday was just qualifying. Uh, somebody came in with a hammer like it's not going to rain in March. Laugh out loud. Um, refunds for camping seems to be the big deal that everyone is upset about. Um, and people are hiding like that, that meme right there. That's what Port Royal is doing. So I don't really know. I mean, modifieds are cool. I mean, I think they save people a little bit from staying to stay away from modifieds, but to not refund campground, uh, purchases is pretty insane. Pretty insane. Just saying. 
Just saying. Uh, but anyways, we'll give a look to the chat here just a little bit. Um, see what people are saying. Camping money at Port Royal will go to the salary of Mayor Sisney. Wow, I did not say this. They have to build more Amish homes, Spike. Wow. Broke Joe t-shirts. There's big potential for someone willing to print what people are thinking. I mean, hey, I got... I, 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 I can I can have us a broke Joe T-shirt made. Where can I find your racing history? What name uh, under what name? Love the how we do song. Willie B. Um, I started out going to the tracks. Got an opportunity to announce. Started announcing very soon. Got an opportunity to run some promotional things. Basically went to running three tracks websites. Announcing at two. Doing marketing and stuff. For both kind of signing deals and everything like that. Uh, then got into talking, talked a little too much, kind of had a split with the track with a bunch of people, started speaking out about some of these underlining issues. And then once again, right after doing that, Kyle Larson came out, tried to point me out as a bad person and a horrible guy. All of his fans came after me. I said, screw all you assholes. Y'all are a bunch of Larson Knights. You're just cheering for Cold Trickle. That's when I started going after Larson for being the modern Cold Trickle. Jeff Gordon part two, which pretty much hundred percent is. And then I just been running around doing uh, video documentaries, talk shows, live shows, driver interviews, basically doing everything, music videos, music songs, uh, comedy, you name it. That, that long live the Chaz does it all. There is no, there is nothing in my work belt that I can't pull out and do some damage with. If that makes any sense. Mike Loomer says, I disagree. For a first-year production, I think they kicked ass. Can't wait to see it grow and get tighter. It'll be interesting to see how much bigger this actually becomes. Uh, because it is going to get bigger. It is going to get bigger. Um, from my understanding, All-Star High Limit Merger is a done deal. They're just waiting to, on how they're going to roll it out. I would I would have suggested don't go full-blown High Limit and rebrand everything. Keep High Limit races as exclusive races within an All-Star Tour and then have an overall all-star high-limit champion. I don't know if that's going to happen. We will see. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Drivers are going to be the big deal. You got to have the stars. If you don't have the stars, you don't have a race. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for the uh, tune in a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. I guess we could do callers. We'll give it. We'll give callers. We'll give you one one shot. We're going to give it. A, 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 hold on. I'm going to put a timer on. We're going to give you everybody one minute. Number is on the screen. And we are going to put a timer. I'm going to give it, uh, let's see. We'll give it one minute. If nobody calls in, I'll just keep reading chats and then we'll get out of here. We got a one minute timer going. Um, it is on. So that is the phone number to call if you want to call in to chat. Oh, we got one in. We got one in. Hello, are you there? Yes. Who's calling in? Larry Otani. Hello. Oh, how's it going? Very good. Who's calling in? How's it going? Uh, do you have the speaker on or something, or or is it the show on on the background? The show's on the background. I can turn it off. Oh, it's fine. Okay, I turned the show off. Okay, well, what's I mean, going on today? Off. Well, I really only had one thing to say, and that was the other day you talked about um, what could make the race team better. You know what I mean? And I think most people say, you know, that when the track gets dry slick, that's when the fasting gets better. So you made one little comment, and I think you were kind of joking, but really it was close to truth. You said, why don't you put holes in the wing? I, I, I bet, but, that's a serious and, thought. That's a serious thought. Okay, but you also brought up the point about, well, someone said, why don't you get, like, Carl Kinser on the show? And I know from my racing, I did a little bit of racing in California, just a tiny bit, um, sprint car racing. And I was one of those guys that I paid for a ride. You know what I mean? Like, one day, Corey Cruzman had this school uh, that if you, paid $300, if you paid $300, you could, you could drive his sprint car around the track. And I also... I had never driven a sprint car. I even went up to Jimmy Sills, where that was a little more expensive. 
that cost $5,000 to drive a 410 sprint car. But to make a long story short, um, I think there are two rules that one track already runs. Like in Ventura, California, they run a very hard right tire. So that slows you down, and if you have more horsepower, it doesn't necessarily translate. Other thing I think you do that would cost zero money that would make it a little easier on the racer is everybody's got these giant wings. So why don't you just say, well, if the wing is at 22 degree angle now, you can only run it at 10 degrees. You put a little scale after they come in. If your wing's too high, hey, you lost the race. And I think that is another way to bring the speed down. You still get to keep the wings. It doesn't cost you anything. It only takes 10 seconds to check for the three placements, and, and then your racing would be better. Well, they got a series in Texas that has uh, rules like that. They do a... They got a spacing rule. They got a uh, you can only you have to run a certain uh, size tire keeps the stagger up. Um, you can only do twenty degrees of wing. No electron or no hydraulic wing sliders. Um, there there's some budget classes out there that try to do something, but I don't see until the world of outlaws do something. It's never going to be top down. It's always going to be bottom up. Yeah, but I, I just I just felt that. You know, that's something that World of Outlaws or someone could do. I mean, already they changed the tire on the World of Outlaws, and I think that made people, I'm not saying made the racing better, but it took them a little while to get used to it. And now people seem like they got it figured out, but they still blow out those tires. You know, Rico Cruz will say, you know, he, he blows more tires because you can only run them so hard. you right. got to slow down a little bit. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you want, is, is that all you had to uh, chime in on there, Larry? That, that that's really I don't know, I love I love your show and you know I I have to admit this I I, I think I figured you out I I think you know after the first two shows I figured out you know you're a really good guy but you know you're you're trying to promote a show and you got to bring up something new and different and so you bring out broke Joe and you bring up a lot of topics that are kind of sensitive and I do believe you say slowly but surely I don't see a lot but I tune in all the time because you guys are always giving me insights about racing that I don't have. Right, it's it's something that people just don't talk about because it is iffy. It's 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 a uh, you do have the poli- politics of the sport that keeps people quiet, you know. And if you don't, if you're not a racer, I'm lucky. You know, I got to know if you. I ran only ten spring car races, but 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 um, but you know, if you're not in the pits, you 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 just don't know what's happening. You, you know, you got the promoter there. Everyone's talking about the promoter. You got the races, racers there. You got the rich guys there. And even when I went, there was actually a lot of poor guys that ran sprint cars, sprint cars at the at the local track. But but you know what? They were just racers. They had been racing all their life. So their challenge was, well, it's a small show. It's a small track. You know, can I get out there and compete? And they could, but they they weren't really going to win because these the guys with you know, sixty thousand dollars to win three hundred dollars or thousand dollars had the advantage. Yeah, I think broke. I think uh, that's what makes broke Joe so mad is uh, he's on the worker man budget, but wants to win and is seeing the. Oh, it doesn't make business sense to him for these people to be spending that amount of money to race for the amount of money that they are, and it's it's but turned it's, it into like it's, America, a, it's, it's turned it into can, like you, a. You can do what like, you want. You can do what you want, right? That is the one thing that that you know you you, know you can't tell somebody's somebody to not buy their kid a Ferrari, you know. And you know I hate to say this, if you don't want to play the game, don't play the game. Play I mean I game. hate to say that, you know you it's may love racing, game. but that's the game. That's the game. And if you don't, if you can't play that game, and you know then you know um you know I'm sorry, but that's just the way life is. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, thanks for calling in. Uh, hopefully we'll get you're you welcome. to call in again if you have. I hope I get to meet you someday. That. I'm gonna have to try to get to track today and try to find out where you're at and track well, you, you down. You got a four two four area code. That's Los Angeles, ain't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's Hollywood. That that's the symbolism. Four two four. I I'll tell you something. I tell you, this is this. I'm just gonna say this. My dad and mom took me to the racetracks twice a week when I was a child. But when and, and my mom went to she grew up after the war and they went to Chicago and she went to two mid, midget races a week back in Chicago for seven years. But oh. when she got really old, she she really didn't want me to go racing anymore. She says, Larry, before she died, she said, Hey, I, I would prefer you not to go to the racetrack because she thought everyone drank, got in fights. She's like, Those are the bad people. And they're not bad people. They're just people. But but so 
to, to, to feel her honor. I don't go to the racetrack, but I, I watch racing every night because I, I subscribe to Flow, I, Dirt, and I can watch ra- more racing every night. And because I've been in the pits and because people like, the, like you or people like Team Az putting those cameras on, Tanner Holmes, I mean, you're right there, right there. And, and if you know anything about racing, you have to be a racer for a few years. They're giving you almost everything that you could want to know about the racetrack, except being there and having rocks on your face, the methanol where you can't bleed, breathe, you know. You know. Right. But that's kind of nice because it kind of cleans it up. You could just sit back there and bullshit and talk and think whatever you want, but you get to see the racing. Well, yeah, but some people say that that's sort of the problem. You know, the, the, the streaming's taking away people from wanting to go to the track. But on the other side of it, promoters and people are saying that's what bringing more popularity to the sport, right. and it's only a matter of time when those people are probably going to go to the racetrack at least once or twice. Maybe not, but they're definitely going to support the streaming. The streaming supports the racers. They're supporting, you know, um, you know, Kyle Larson and other things. So, you know, they're, they're, there's probably, I'm hoping there's more positive than good because I'll be honest with you, I have loved NASCAR. And I and I have never been to a NASCAR race, ever, never, ever, never. I'm sure you know? there's a lot of and people, I, fans I, of Formula One, that could say that. You know, they've never been to one. I bet too much money. You, you know, and, and what it is, and I'm just now because of people like you and all these shows, I'm starting to get into to get into F1 and things only because you know what? I like all the bullshit. What I about like the all dirt the dirt super late models. That's one thing I have never really watched. I mean, uh, local track, you know, we had, but I, 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 I grew up on, I, I don't know. I just love sprint cars. I've been in a sprint car, you know, I've driven one and, you know, and I've I crashed a few. And so everything that people say about sprint cars, like, you know, people getting hurt, you know, sometimes, you know, one thing like people don't realize when you get in a sprint car, really good drivers are going to pull those belts as tight, you know, because you know you're going to get a wreck. You know you're going to hit a wall. Out of, so you have to be kind of like, well, says, man, you know, you just you just plan for it because you know it's eventually going to happen. If you have a little bit of loose belt, I mean, it, you're going to get messed up, man, because you're, you're going to move around in those belts. You get those G-forces going. But if you're locked down tight and if you're like a football player, you feel the impact for that second, you tense your muscles, then you relax. And, you know, and I think there's some some saying to say, hey, the faster you go, the easier the crash is. Lyle Larson's been in Daytona, car crumping, yeah. but he was going as fast as he could. And I think there's something about that that, you know what I mean, the good Lord just took care of him because, you know, um, he's a good racer. He's good, for sure. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. He's good. But thank well, you. No I think problem. I just had to call in because I do love your show. Well, call in some more. We can, we'll look forward to it. Thanks for calling in. It was Larry, right? Yeah, Larry, thank you very much. All right, bye. All righty, nice one call. We'll try to squeeze in one more, try to keep it at an hour. We'll do. We'll try to do one more. We did have one missed call. We're going to try to call it back, um, and then we'll get out of the show. Put your comments up on the screen uh, before we get out of here. Looks like no supers. No supers. Last super goes to Larry. Wants Bud Kading on the show. Oh, if I want to know the real story. Somebody make that happen. Somebody make that happen. Oh, we got N words on the screen. Great. We'll see if this last call will put a five minute clock on it for the moment they answer, and then we'll get out of here. Try to make it an hour show on the dot. It looks like that may not be the case. Did we get an answer? Hello. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Who uh, do we have calling or calling in? We got five minutes on the clock. Uh, this is David Campbell. I just called because I, I've been a fan of yours. And I wanted to tell you what a good job you do, and I like how you tell the truth okay. about all the racing. Well, it is know? all an opinion. What makes it truth? Is there different versions of I truth? Mean because, I mean, because, yeah, you tell the stuff that nobody really wants to talk about. You give your opinion, on, and I agree with a lot of the stuff you say. Tell them. You Okay. okay. Like like the like T Maz come out with that thing about he walked through the pits and he said, This is money here, these people have paid for this ride, this ride, you know. That's the truth. Money talks in racing, you know. 
Yeah, and it, it seems like that's kind of unknown, don't you think? From a lot of fans, they they literally think that it's just the best guys out there, or it's really a bunch it's of people not, who bought it. Yeah, I agree with that because I some guy at my local track may be better than anybody that's ever drove a car, but if he can't afford to buy a ride, nobody will ever know about right. him. Right, so and somebody I, could be. I agree with you. You know, somebody could be. You know, Tanner Thorson, Spencer Baston, Mike, uh, Buddy Kofoid, they did all the same things Larson did. They just didn't get the, the money and the brakes at the right time, you know? Yep. I agree with that. I agree with that part of it that you talk about. I mean, I truly agree because I've seen guys at my local tracks. They're really good racers, and I, I've always thought a couple of them, if they had the money for somebody to back them, they'd be as good as the rest of the guys, but they just don't have the money, you know? Right, and that's kind of where my right, and I, I started this opinion based on you know trying to promote and market local racers, you know, and I realized yeah. real quick that most people in society think of your local hot shoe as like a a a, a fail a failure, like a a failed NASCAR driver, like like a flag football player, like a thirty five year old basketball player at your local uh, gym, you know, that's how they view your local sprint car racers. Uh, you know, they yeah. even even the top of the line, you know, uh, World of Outlaw Sprint cars or something like that. You know, they're they're still viewing those guys as like uh, college players. You know, uh, a D yeah. League or Triple A. You know, so it's and it's a respect factor, and, and I think that's why people don't get the sponsorship money that they they should be getting uh, because you know why why be on something that you never even heard of or don't respect or isn't a pro level sport. You know, so yeah. I'm more of a late model guy, but like even in the late models, like I said, there was a couple guys back 20 years ago when they started. I always thought, man, if they had the money, they would yeah. be awesome. And what's I your opinion? On, we're not, my, well, and Ricky Thornton Jr. is the best best example for late model racing. He came from a flatbed IMCA modified. You know, I mean, I don't know. I think he's got the right engineers, really, because. I agree with Scott Bloomquist, what he said about him. You agree with ago. Scott Bloomquist on Ricky Thornton Jr., so we disagree on something. Okay. I guess so. So you think I mean, Ricky Thornton Jr. Good. ain't that damn good? Ricky Thornton Jr. is a Kyle Larson, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, he did do good in the Modified. I he seen destroyed a lot of everything. Where he, raced, where he done really good in the Modified. But he does make a lot of mistakes, and the car being very fast does help him out a lot. But... I get what you see, too, what you're saying, too. It would help anybody out to have a fast car, you know. Well, if you got the car a certain level of, of tightness or something like that, that could that could be a reason as to why he's making mistakes out there because he's running the car on a ragged edge, you know. Other guys got their setup maybe a little more conservative, a little more easier to drive. So, I mean, there's explanations as to why the car may twitch or get out of his hand sometimes, whatever – setup they got under there it may take a lot of driver to hold on to it so what do you think about johnny scott selling out his late models i think it was johnny scott yeah that's pretty I sad i mean he was gonna sell out yeah i mean johnny scott the scott brothers were you know ryan gustin level there for the longest the you, usmts you know you think they're going back to the modified or do you think they're getting out of it i think that the modified is definitely a good um avenue for them they got success there and they're starting to pay more and more in usmts usmts starting to pay a lot more money these modified guys don't even have to go late mile racing you know. that's good too because they cost just as much as a mod as a late model that's for true the most part yeah they're Especially about when you the get same into like usmts you yeah know? they're expensive they are definitely expensive but uh thanks for calling in david it was uh, david right yeah yeah uh i, I guess yeah, we'll time Catch you next time. Call I hung in again. Up because I, I thought you might have had it set up, honestly. So I hung up, and then you said you was going to call him back. I told my lady, I said, he's going to call me back. Watch. And yeah. then you did. So. Well, of hey, course. It's good talking with you, Chess. You too, sir. But, hey, I always watch your videos, and I agree with a lot of stuff you say. That's all I wanted to tell you, really, basically. Well, it's good to have a conversation as well, but thanks for calling. All right. Bye. We do have one more caller. We're going to put the five-minute clock on it. A 706 number. Who is it? I got to pee really bad. Last one. The clock is a ticking. The clock is a ticking. If he doesn't answer. Or she. Could be a she, right? Let's not be sexist here. 
it, uh, uh, it well, it's acting like a she because they ain't answering the phone. Let me, let me ask this. Oh, who is it? Oh my God! Hung up in my face. It definitely acted like a she. Didn't answer my damn call. And then tenth ring answers it, and then says hello, and I say hello, and, and she hangs up in my face. So that was textbook acting like a woman, right there. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, couple of calls. That was great. That was fun. Um, we might have to look into this. I'm, I'm assuming BK is Brent Kading. In the old days, people racers said they went to BK because he would voice their concerns. So maybe this is Brent Kading that he's talking about, not Bud. But anyways. Uh, 20 RT is no 6, 57, or 5. Ricky Thornton Jr. is a better race car driver, in my opinion, than Kyle Larson. He just hasn't had the same opportunities as Kyle Larson. I just do believe that. But anyways, thanks for tuning in today, ladies and gentlemen. It was a good one. We're going to try to go live again tomorrow at noon-ish sometime. Keep an eye on the channel for some other videos, some car breakers, all this other st style stuff. We got things rolling and a-going here on the Chaz. Uh, and, and, and keep up with us by subscribing. That's the easiest way. Also, membership channel. Join that deal. That's awesome. Love Larry sending in the Super Chats, even though uh, freaking YouTube takes 30%. That's an amazing percentage, by the way. We should have all started YouTube. We'd be, we'd be set. Uh, but thanks for tuning in once again. Go to the store. Get you a Chaz hat. This is the gold flex fit version Right here, we got some shirts on there. Got some shirts in the works, including this new Broke Joe show. I mean, we got to have a Broke Joe show uh, shirt come out. So things are happening. Things are going good. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope to see you tomorrow. As always, be sure to subscribe, and we will catch you next time.